ETF. Can you kind of explain what an ETF is so that if someone who wants to get started with VTSAX, they can go ahead and get started through a VTI or some kind of ETF? Sure. So first of all, let me say that I, I, I agree. You just, you just named two really good ways to get started. So I agree with you on both of those. Uh, and VTI, which is, as you mentioned, is an ETF. ETF stands for Exchange Traded Fund. And without getting too deep in the weeds, uh, VTI ho owns exactly the same portfolio as VTSAX. So when you own VTI, you own the same portfolio as VTSAX. They are interchangeable in that regard. VTI, the exchange traded fund, it was designed to allow you to buy the fund like you'd buy a stock. And so you can buy just one share of VTI and I haven't looked at it recently. I think that's like a hundred bucks a share or something now. So you could literally go and buy one share of VTI from Vanguard. So there'd be no um, commission on it. And, and now you're in the game for a hundred bucks or 150 bucks or whatever the shares are going for at this, at this time. Um, and you could hold VTA, you could hold VTI forever and you'd be holding essentially the same portfolio. Um, so there you go. I, I, you know, I prefer VTSAX. I prefer the fund probably because when I started investing, there weren't exchange traded funds and I'm more comfortable with it. And I'm not, you know, exchange traded funds were created to facilitate trading in these things. And I don't believe in trading. I, I will own my VTSAX literally forever. I'll never sell it. Uh, you know, when I'm living on it, I might sell off tiny little pieces of it to, you know, to, to um, provide for my spending, but I'll never sell it. I'll pass it on uh, to my charities and, and, and to my kid. And, and uh, she has the instructions to never sell it. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's just no reason to sell it because you own, basically you own the, the publicly traded segment of the United States, which I think is a pretty good bet. Pretty and cool. by the way, if, if, if you don't have faith in the future of the United States, and some people don't, uh, then obviously the, my approach is also not one that you, that you want to follow. It does, it, it does suppose a, a belief that the United States has a, a good future. And uh, that is my belief. That's pretty awesome, man. I, and I agree with you 100%. Now, you know, I'm also a fan of Fidelity, not as much as Vanguard, but I, I do love the fact that with Fidelity, you can drop in $25 a month. And that's how I got my, my kids started with their UGMA, Uniform Gift Transfer to Minors Act or something. Yeah. $25 yeah. a month. Yeah. And, and, and they're doing it into FZROX, which is the zero, zero fee fund, which is pretty similar to VTSAX. Now, if someone decides, hey, we're going to go ahead and do $25 a month into FZROX, once you hit $3,000, would you recommend them just go ahead and stay there or would you recommend them to transfer that over to VTSAX? Uh, <laughs> so uh, I don't like Fidelity, but not because it's a bad place to invest. So anybody who's invested with Fidelity can feel confident that they, you know, they have a good investment. And I, I forget the ticker you mentioned, but it is exactly, it's Fidelity's version of VTSAX. And like VTSAX, it holds the total stock market index. So you're buying the same kind of investment. Um, so would I, and I'll talk a minute about my feelings about fidelity, uh, which don't have anything to do with investment so much, but would I switch it over to Vanguard? I probably would because Vanguard is unique in all investment companies in that it is structured again by Jack Bogle, uh, who's passed away now, but he structured it so that we, the people who own the funds, own the company. So there is a direct alignment between Vanguard's best interests and the investor's best interest. 
every other investment company has to serve two masters. Vanguard's the only one that doesn't have to. Because yeah. we, the investor, are both the owners and the investor. But Fidelity, which is a privately held company, um, has two masters. It has you, the investor, which, of course, they want to serve well enough that you'll stick around. But they also, and more importantly, from their point of view, they want to serve the owners of the company. This is true of, let's say, T. Rowe Price, which is a publicly traded investment company. So they certainly want to serve their investors or the investors will go away. But more importantly, they're trying to serve their shareholders, which are their owners. So their, their interests are not precisely aligned with ours. Um, the other thing, and this, is, this goes back a long time, when Jack Bogle created the first index fund in 1975, the industry was horrified because it gave a better deal to investors, which of course took money out of their pocket. And collectively, they, they did everything they could to strangle the idea in its crib. And Fidelity in particular uh, took the lead in that charge. Fidelity came out with a series of ads making spurious charges about indexing, including that it was un-American. Jack Bogle, in a brilliant move, by the way, took those ads and framed them and mounted them in his office. Class act. So I have a little bit of a hostility towards Fidelity for those reasons. We index funds um, are the greatest thing to happen to the individual investor ever. Mm -hmm. And if it had been up to Fidelity and the other companies, I don't, they certainly weren't alone in that. They never would have seen the light of day. Now they provide them because competitively they have to. And the last thing I'll say is that with that no fee fund, um, that's great that it's no fee and that's certainly good for you, the investor. But from an ethical point of view, it bothers me because it's not like there's no cost to running that fund. So by definition, they're taking the cost of running that fund and putting it on their shareholders that own other funds. And I have a bit of an ethical issue with that. So I would rather pay this 0.04% uh, expense ratio to BTSAX than- so you, say that, you mean a yeah. loss, loss leader or something like that? Yeah, I think it's a loss leader. Obviously what they're hoping is they'll get you into their, uh, into their fold and you'll be happy with them. And by the way, in fairness, from everything I've ever heard, Fidelity provides great service. Uh, you know, it's, you're not going to have to worry. Nobody at Fidelity is going to steal your money or anything like that. So it's a perfectly sound place to do business with. I don't mean to apply otherwise. But clearly, they don't want you in the index fund. They would much rather have you in their actively managed funds. And that will be their hope is that you know, you'll make a move over. And again, in fairness, Vanguard also has actively managed funds. Um, I'm a little horrified by that personally because it's it's straying from the one true faith, in my view, that Jack Bogle created. But, you know, like any organization, they want to grow and prosper and they know certain investors want actively managed funds and so they provide them. 